Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to deal about the female internal genital organs. So previously, I already dealt about its part, first part that is vagina. So you can go through with that video and I have given the link in the description box below. So in this part, the second here we'll deal about the anatomy of uterus. So this is also to be termed as womb or hystra. So whenever we perform certain surgical intervention on the uterus, we use the term hystra, like hystrotomy, hystrectomy. Okay, the incision on the uterus is the hystrotomy, and when we are taking out the uterus, whole uterus is the hystrectomy. So the hystra is also to be used uh, on the place of uterus. So this uterus is the pelvic organ which lies in the pelvic cavity and anteriorly in front there is a bladder and behind posteriorly there is a rectum. So it lies between these two structure. So it is a hollow muscular organ which is a pyriform shaped structure that is inverted pear like structure and it plays very important role in the accommodation of the fetus during pregnancy because the implantation takes place in the uterus and there it allows the fetus to grow more uh, in subsequent trimesters. So it is the site for implantation and for the growth and nourishment for the fetus. So what is the position of the uterus? It is anti-verted, anti -flex. So this is a normal position. So what do you mean by anti-verted? That is there is an angulation at the level of cervix. So the relationship of long axis of vagina with the long axis of cervix. Okay, because it shows that at this length angle, the uterus bends forward, leaning toward the bladder. So it is the angulation between the long axis of vagina and the long axis of the cervix and it creates 90 degree angle. So thereby it shows anti verted position. V means vagina. V means anti verted Okay. This is the trick to learn easily where anti version creates. And the anti flex means again there is an angulation because the long uh, from the long axis of the body again it bends forward it lean toward the bladder so the another angulation between the long axis of the cervix and the long axis of the body of the uterus creates 120 degree angle and this angulation is termed as anti flexion so the normal position of the uterus is anti verted anti flexed leaning forward and bending toward the uterus that is there is a dextro rotation of the uterus is the position of the normal uterus now how many parts of the uterus are there there are four parts that is the topmost superior part which is dome shaped portion which do not have any cavity and it lies superior to the uterine tube is the convex region is the fundus and the major part which is a triangular shaped structure and the larger part is the body and the corpus corpora and below the body part is the narrow constricted region is the isthmus and this isthmus part plays very important role uh, during pregnancy because it forms lower uterine segment. This is the part where actually the incision is going to be given during cesarean section. The LSCS lower segment cesarean section where this isthmus forms the lower segment. Okay, So this isthmus part extends from the uh, anatomical internal os to the histological internal os and Below to this isthmus is the cervical region. So again this cervical region divided into two. The part which lies above the vagina is supravaginal part and the part of cervix which lies within the vagina is the vaginal part. 
and in between these parts there is a canal uh, which is to be called as cervical canal and again it has an um, obstetrical importance because by this cervical part only we measures the dilatation okay so the cervical part extends from the histological internal os to external os okay and uh, the secretion of the uterus is usually thin and watery from the endometrial gland but the secretion from the cervical region is quite thick and uh, these are alkaline in nature which are rich in fructose mucopolysaccharide because they provide some amount of nourishment to the sperms to reach up to the fallopian tube and uh, it also protect the uterine cavity from uh, entering of any uh, bacteria during pregnancy so it has bactericidal effect as well so during pregnancy this cervical mucus uh, forms a thick plug in the cervical canal and protect the cavity from being infected by any pathogen okay and in the body of the uterus there is one part which projects superiorly or laterally is to be termed as the cornua of the uterus and this is the main region through which the uterine tubes are connected with the uterus and certain ligaments are also attached with this part like round ligament and the ovarian ligament so these are also being attached with this part so this part is the cornua of uterus now next we'll see the relationship or the communication of nearby structure with the uterus so superiorly this uterus connected with the two uterine tube uh, laterally and inferiorly the uterus is connected by the vagina anteriorly there is a fold uh, of peritoneum uh, which reflect over the bladder and this fold of peritoneum which lies between the bladder and the anterior part of the uterus is uv fold utrovesical fold and uh, posteriorly again uh, this posterior wall of peritoneum reflect over the rectum and creates the another pouch and there it calls the recto uterine pouch or the pouch of douglas so you can say that anteriorly it is partially covered but posteriorly this peritoneum uh, covers the uterus completely but laterally on superior aspect there are two uterine tube so thereby peritoneum is not able to cover whole lateral aspect of the uterus so thereby these peritoneal fold these peritoneal folds create a sheet over this tube okay so the peritoneum creates a sheet over this tube uh, like a hanging structure both side and by this double fold of peritoneum they forms a broad ligament where it contains certain connective tissues certain uh, structures lies within them like certain arteries vessels now innervation this all now next we'll talk about its histology what are the layers are in the uterus so the outermost lining of the uterus is the perimetrium it is the serous coat of the peritoneum so this is the peritoneum which encloses the uterus on the outer aspect by the serous lining which forms the perimetrium so as we discussed earlier that uh, anteriorly it is partially covered posteriorly it completes but laterally it will not uh, enclose whole uterus because uh, superior aspect there are the two two tubes okay so by that uh, they create certain sheet like structure okay the broad ligaments so it only covers uh, uterus anteriorly partially posteriorly it covers completely and uh, on the middle aspect uh, inner to this perimetrium is the myometrium which is the smooth muscle lining okay because majorly this organ is uh, formed by the muscle lining as the function of this uterus is to 
contract at the time of labor and propel all the product of conceptions. So this smooth muscle linings are again arranged in the three layers. The outer lining is the longitudinal muscle fibers. The intermediate or the middle one is the interlacing muscle fibers, smooth muscle fibers and the innermost are the circular one. Majorly they are more abundant at the orifices, at the cervical os, at the uterine tubes, there the circular muscle fibers are more, where the orifices are there. Okay, So three linings are there in the myometrium, longitudinal, interlacing and circular. And deep to that, the innermost lining of the uterus is the endometrium. There is no submucosal lining. The innermost is the mucosal lining. And this mucosal lining uh, is formed by epithelial lining or the lamina propria, where some stromal tissues and the endometrial gland, blood vessels, they all are present in this mucosal lining. But again, the endometrial lining is divided into two. The lining which faces toward the muscle, muscular layer is the stratum basalis, the basal layer. And the innermost one is the functional layer, stratum functionalis. So why we are saying the functional layer? Because this sludges off, this will completely removed in each menstrual cycle. And the basal layer give rise to new functional layer in every month. Okay, so two layer that is basal layer and the functional layer. Basal layer give rise to new layer and the functional layer which sludges in every menstruation. Okay, so thereby the three lining of the uterus from outer to inner are the perimetrium, myometrium and the endometrium. Now after that the blood supply of the uterus, uh, the, the vessels which supply oxygenated blood to the uterus is by the anterior division of internal iliac artery and from this internal iliac artery the two uterine artery arises and they both lie on the lateral aspect of the uterus and from there again when it pierces the layer of the uterus in the perimetrium, myometrium and in endometrium it again uh, differentiate into another arteries like in perimetrium they forms arcuate artery, in myometrium, radial artery and in endometrium again they form basal artery and uh, spiral artery. So thereby this uterine artery supplies whole lining and the venous drainage is through the venous plexuses. So the name of the veins are correspond with the arterial name and uh, there these all vein drain the deoxygenated blood in the uterine vein and then the uterine vein drains into the internal iliac vein. Now we'll deal the last part in the uterus is the ligaments of the uterus. The structures that support the uterus to maintain its position. So one is the peritoneal ligament. The peritoneal ligament is again the uh, broad ligament is the broad ligament that is the double fold of peritoneum okay so this double fold of peritoneum which hangs uh, on both side of the uterine tube creates a flared part okay so the part of the broad ligament the double fold of peritoneum which overlies the uterine tube is the mesocelphinx part and uh, on the posterior ligament of this broad ligament uh, the posterior part is attached with the ovarian part, the ovaries. So there this posterior ligament which attaches with the ovaries are called the mesovarium through which the blood uh, vessels and the nerve innervations uh, enter or exit in the ovaries and the remaining part of broad ligament which flared out on the lateral aspect of the uterus is the mesometrium. So these are the three parts of the broad ligament which forms the peritoneal ligament and the other ligaments are the fibromuscular ligament. So in this fibromuscular one is the round ligament, the round ligament which extends from the corner of the uterus and it extends to the labia majora. The second ligament is the uterosacral ligament. This will extend from the 
posterior part of the cervix to the anterior part of the sacrum. So this ligament extends from that to this region and the third ligament is the transverse cervical ligament which are also being called as cardinal ligament or the Mackenfort ligament. So these ligament runs transversely from the supravaginal part of the cervical region they run transversely and uh, they attaches the uterine cervical region to the pelvic wall laterally. Okay, so thereby these all ligament help the uterus to maintain its position. So importantly, the two ligaments are the peritoneal ligament, where the broad ligaments and the certain folds come into this. That is the UV fold, uterovesical fold, and the pouch of Douglas and the broad ligament. And the other ligament is the pubocervical ligament where the ligament extends from the cervical region to the symphysis pubis. So these are the ligaments that combinedly help the uterus to maintain its position. Okay. So broadly it is divided into two. One is peritoneal ligament where the broad ligament and the certain folds came un under this uh, ligament that is UV fold and the pouch of the glass and the broad ligament and the fibromuscular ligament where majorly the lower part of the uterus is supported by a certain these all ligaments. So here in this lecture we have discussed with the basic anatomy and its part of the uterus. So in another part we will discuss about the fallopian tube. Thank you.